This video was published by mbkpinternational.com. In this video, we're going to be talking about the clamp getting stuck in the down position for the Guillotine XPC19 Pro. This video would also be good for the Guillotine EC19 Pro V2. Um, first thing you're going to do is, um, with your cutter still on, you're going to try to just reverse it. There is a reverse here, and, and it's basically these two center buttons, the uh, reset and this center one. It usually has a, two red arrows up. So basically you're just going to push and hold both these buttons simultaneously. And then you can release it. And that's what should happen, unless it's just stuck and it, can't, it doesn't have the power to, to return it to the top. I'm going to go ahead and put it back down to simulate what, what you may have here. So if, if it doesn't, you can try it a couple times, but you got to push them both simultaneously and you got to hold them. So um, um, if that doesn't get to the top, then you need to manually move it to the top. And what you want to do there, you're going to need to unplug your cutter and remove this top crown. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the cutter. Just unplug it completely from power. That way you know you don't have any power going through this at all, even if you turn it off. And it seems off if you got that plugged in there's still power going through it so it's just best to unplug it and the first thing we're going to do is remove this top crown here there's two screws on the side here a phillips screwdriver is all you need go to the other side okay and if you're by yourself, if you have a second person, you can lift this up and they can unplug this wire here for you. But if you're by yourself, you can kind of latch it behind this here. Just let it rest it there. And you're just looking for this wire coming down from the crown. And you just need to unplug it from that board. So it could be on this post here, so sometimes they switch them. But it's typically on this one here. So just make sure you look for the one that's hanging down. And it's usually that, but it could be on this and this one could be over there. So just make sure you get the right one. And then it comes straight off like that, and you can see the, 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 the wire hanging down there. Okay, so the, that's the simplest part. And the, what you want to do here, and I'm not sure, I can't even remember which way this goes, so I'm going to try to pull it. See, right, if I go this way, if I'm, I'm trying to manually move this back to the top. And if I'm pulling this way, it's that's obviously going down because it doesn't want to move at all. So, I mean, there's no play in it that way. It's already fully down that way. There is a little bit of play in this, so... So you know you're going the right way when you go a little ways first and it's just playing it and that's not moving. See, it's not moving yet. Okay, now I feel it hit it now. See what I'm doing here? So when you when it's down and you want it to go up, you go to the back of the, um, the belt here. You grab it close to this gear and you're going to go this way and keep going this way nice and easy until it stops. It's basically hitting the part where it wasn't, does it, where it's kind of stuck. Now you don't want to just try, you don't want to just pull on this hard because you can go in and you can get your thumb caught in here or something like that and hurt your finger. So all you want to do here is grab it. Once you get all the way and it won't move anymore, you get in about in the middle and you're just going to go like this and you're just going to go boom, boom, boom. Grab it stiff here and just, just start hitting it and it will eventually break free. Well, go ahead and pull back so they can see this. And there it starts coming up. Now this can be a little stiff. When, you, when, it's, when it breaks free manually, it can, sometimes they come up they're just super easy that's usually on the older machines newer machines are usually a little more stiff until things break in so it can be a, a slightly stiff but you don't want it to the point where you're having to really pull if that's the case there's something wrong with your your um, clamp assembly and that would have to be looked at the assembly the, the whole assembly may have to be replaced but there could be a little stiffness to it like this is a new cutter and so it's a little stiff but I can easily move it up and just keep moving it up and Basically, you want it on this um, left side, you want it about maybe a half inch or so below the edge of the blade. Don't touch that blade here, it's pretty sharp. And that's about the, the, where it's about a half inch below the blade on this side. That's about where the position you want it in. You don't want to go up any higher, because if you go up any higher, it'll go past this sensor back here. There's a sensor back here and a magnet that basically tells it when to stop. The magnet is on the clamp, and there's the sensor. And you can see the sensor is right up against the magnet. There's a black tab on it there. Let me show you. You can see the black tab right there and the magnet. So that's telling it where to stop. And um, so you don't want to go up any higher because if you go any higher, you'll pass it and then it'll go the wrong, it can go the wrong, wrong way if you reverse it where it goes all the way up and doesn't want to stop and just gets stuck in the top instead. But anyway, manually move it to the top. Again, 
there will be now it's, there's going to be play the other way you know if you had to go down with the blade until it hits the until it hits it, and then you then you break it free and you start just again you just rock it pop 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 a little bit more time until until you break it free and that's all you need to do once you do that you can um put your crown back on again if you have someone here they can plug it in for you that c cable hanging there but if you're by yourself you can just latch it behind this plate here and free up your hands and then plug it just don't miss any prongs there's four prongs on that so you get all four prongs in there nice make sure they're perfectly in there because if this screen doesn't come back on when you turn it on you also you didn't plug that in correctly just get this down and just make sure it's make sure it's on the right doesn't get behind this plate here it's on the out, on both sides make sure it's on the out and it didn't get behind the plate so you can go behind it like that sometimes you don't want that you want to make sure it's on that side of the plate on both sides okay and now we're just going to plug it back in and just um see if it gets stuck again basically is what we're, all we're doing if it continuously gets stuck then there's another issue it just may be a one-time thing if you, especially if you have a new cutter because things are a little stiff right now let's see if, of course this one's fine so it's going to return to the top but um that's all you really need to do if it if it gets stuck if it continues to get stuck or has any other issues with getting stuck you know it may happen once it's pretty rare when it happens but on new cutters but it can possibly happen again or a third time in a month or a week or two period until it gets broken but for the most part you shouldn't be having this issue but if you are and you continue to have this issue then there's another place where we need to look and i'll show you that we're going to go ahead and, and remove this crown again and i'm going to remove this this um this table here i'm going to go ahead and plug it we'll go ahead and pause it right now okay i went ahead and took the top crown off again you know how to do that now I took the, there's six Phillips screws here and I removed all six and then you should just be able to slide this straight out pretty simple slide it straight out and just put it down somewhere and basically I just want to show you again make sure the cutters unplugged before you get into this especially make sure the cutters unplugged from power um, basically I want to show you is this right here this is your um, capacitor for for the clamp motor and here's the clamp motor over here you can come around here and you can see the clamp motor right there Right there's clamp motor and here's the top of it with the belt okay and this is the capacity these wires and these wires go right i'm going to slide this out and basically these wires go right into the main board right there and there and that's where also the clamp wires go right into there but this is your capacitor and what it's this one here is 27 uf or microfarads at 27 microfarads they range anywhere. I've seen them 25 microfarads. I've seen them 27 like this. I've seen them all the way up to 35 microfarads. And I don't know if there's an issue with going higher, but I doubt it. Um, anyway, you can just replace this. Could You could have a bad bad capacitor here. Or it could be, they could have put in like a 20 or 15 UF capacitor or 12, and it's not strong enough. These capacitors, all they do is they, they give the, when a motor first starts, it doesn't have a lot of power. So if it's the clamp, when it's designed, it comes down and the motor's constantly pushing down on this stack of paper to push hard on it for when the blade comes and cuts it so it doesn't move. And then when it's time to come back up, it's almost, it is, they are basically stuck in the down position. But you, with this thing here, we'll give it a kick start on this motor to give it a little extra um, umph to just pop it free and bring it back to the top. If it's not strong enough to pop it free, it's either because it's bad or it's too low of a microfarads and you can either replace this or add to it it's pretty simple it just they just plug right into these two screws here on the, on the on the main board there is a slim chance it could be your main board but it's unlikely because the main board basically controls everything so it could be that there's a slim chance that you could just have a bad motor up here bad clamp motor and there's a chance you know like i talked before this clamp is assembly the, the, the assembly of the clamp could just be really stiff and you can tell that when you're moving this it should be it sh you should be able to move it this one's a little stiff again the new ones are stiffer but you should be able to move it you know it's, it's if, it, if it was really hard to move that's when you know well there's it might be an issue in the clamp assembly like if you really had to tug on it hard uh, another possibility if this clamp is belt is too tight that's pretty normal when you squeeze on it like that you don't want to be able to touch it together but you want there to be some play in it too you don't want it to be super strong tight because that means it's got a lot of pressure right here in it so and that would be easy to relieve a little bit of pressure by just loosening these these four hex five millimeter hex wrench i believe and then just take a uh, hammer on the side here 
and tap it just to move move this whole whole assembly just a hair that way and it will loosen this belt up and then tighten it back down it would just take a hair just tapping it with a hammer just moving it just a hair if this is really really tight belt but this is about normal here you go up high on a high view you don't want to be able to touch together but if you squeeze it pretty good it usually goes about halfway but anyway okay that's it for now if um i'll make a different video if you need to replace this um capacitor and and that's about it. This video was published by mbkpinternational.com.